Razorback 22 point lead at halftime for the Aggies of Utah State. Today's game being presented by Geico here at halftime as we uh, kind of break down the first half. It was interesting at the beginning, uh, Eric Crouch, because both defenses in this game were very dominant early on. Yeah, they sure were. I think they wanted to come out firing, trying to stop these fast paced offenses down in Chucky Keaton, but really weren't able to do it. Chucky Keaton got kind of in a groove there uh, with his offensive line, with his, uh, you know, plays to the outside, getting him, you know, mixing things up outside, inside, throwing the ball down the field. I think they kind of found a little bit of a groove. He's 20 for 27 yep. throwing the football. So uh, Chucky Keaton doing a great job in that first half of just getting this team back in rhythm, getting them back in a sync. But early on it was a Chucky Keaton miscue, and that really gave Wake Forest an early edge. Yeah, it sure was. You know, early in this game, Wake Forest getting a little life with this interception. And Josh Banks running in for a touchdown. And, and then really the, the – their backs were against the wall, but what happened? Their defensive unit came back out with Zach Vigil, made a nice play, interception for a touchdown. So we saw these defenses, and then all of a sudden we get a trick play that happens. Number 30 right there, he's a team captain on the Wake Forest side. Hunter Williams, he gets beat. And then again, Utah State's defense just doing it right, getting in the face. Well, that was called a fumble right, on that's the, the field. One, that's the one I thought wasn't really a fumble, but it was. It ended up being a fumble. And then Chucky Keaton here on an option play to the left-hand side. Takes kind of a big hit right there from number 40. And that was, again, Josh Banks making a big hit on Chucky Keaton. Whether we see him back in the second half remains to be seen. Well, after a very tight first quarter, uh, Utah State has pretty much broken it open in terms of the stats, 237 total yards to 55 for the Demon Deacons. And, and Eric, neither team has been effective at all on the ground in this one. No, they certainly haven't. If you see the numbers, minus 23 rushing yards for Wake Forest, only 27 for Utah State. Really need to work maybe in the second half to make something happen in the running game. Work those offensive linemen. Let's take a look at the difference makers in tonight's game brought to you by Geico, Josh Banks. Uh, of course, the 70 yard interception return for the touchdown that at that point had given Wake Forest the seven uh, to nothing lead before Utah State was able to come back. And, and JoJo Natson, I was joking in the first half that he was go-go JoJo and he's been terrific, especially on the outside for the Aggies. Certainly has. Even in the passing game, he's been effective. Just another target that they're they're looking at, making sure that he doesn't get the ball. Well, we're taking a look at uh, trying to uh, find Chucky Keaton out uh, for Utah State, and again, that was a a bit of a storyline late in that first half that we just showed you. The uh, where he came up a little bit uh, lame in the first half late. Second half is underway as the Aggies receive the kickoff. And around the outside, trying to break it through that time. That's a, a run back that time as the ball will be placed just inside of the 40 yard line. Some pretty good speed there. Let's go downstairs, Cassie Gallo. Well, we'll talk to Coach Dave Clawson coming out of the half. He said the biggest thing his offense needs to do right now is get more protection for quarterback John Wilford. He said, they're giving up too many plays. He said they're just, that Utah State is really just teeing off on them right now on defense. He said it was good to start, but then they're giving Utah State too much, too good a field position. The biggest thing he said his team needs to do right now is just get more first downs. And he said, hey, a big play might be nice. All right, thanks, Cassie. And the other news, uh, no, Chucky Keaton, Daryl Garrison, the sophomore quarterback from Chandler, Arizona, is in there. And so we'll try to get an update, too, on uh, the status of Chucky Keaton here. And, you know, you wonder, too, uh, you know, he looked okay after uh, he was hobbled a little bit, but with a 29-7 lead, uh, you wonder if his day may be over. Yeah, probably is. And Daryl Garrettson also has quite a bit of experience from last year. Garrettson now will have this one picked off. Picked off the other way goes Hunter Williams, and he is dragged down by JoJo Natson and a flag on the play. Probably a horse collar here. What a turn of events and a great start here in the second half for Wake Forest. Darrell Garrettson right here just eyeing his receiver the whole time. Probably should have came off him. See your reads. You know, his eyes are on the receiver, but he should have his eyes on the defenders that can take that ball away. Nine, there you see the inside receiver just that's Jojo Natson that just hooked up in the wrong area. 
you got to have a, a good read out of your quarterback and not a great way to start the second half coming in for Chucky e. Keaton. Well, Daryl Garrettson picked off. It was a horse collar. And so they're going to mark the ball on the five yard line of Utah State. Opportunity here for the Demon Deacons to cut into the lead. They trail 29 to 7 here in Logan. Side trying to break it is Orville Reynolds and he gets the ball down to about the three yard line. You know, I like the feet, the footwork. I'm surprised he hasn't pulled that ball a little bit on the outside because right here, a great opportunity. They all fit on the run. You see him out there by himself, but Orville Renner, Reynolds, excuse me, trying to fight to get to that end zone, but the speed of the Utah State defense just too much. Dave Clausen's team goes three wide. Wolfer now going to give it off up the middle that time to the freshman Isaiah Robinson. Not much, maybe a yard. Although it appears they're going to mark the ball at the three. Well, when you're down 29 to seven, you would think they will go for it on the next two downs here. Yeah, you would absolutely think that. That's what I would do in this situation. Try to get some life back into your offense, into your team in general. But the defensive line, the interior line right now for Utah State holding very, very strong. Wolford now in the shotgun. Has an open receiver. Touchdown, Isaiah Robinson. And the freshman running back from Charlotte, North Carolina, out of the backfield. Gets six for Wake Forest, and they cut into that Aggies lead. Well, I really like that play. They've been blitzing. John Wolfer all day long. And so if they're blitzing him, somebody's got to be open. You know, that's the ultimate. You got to find the open guy. And right there, the running back got himself open in the touch in the end zone for a touchdown. Mike Weaver out for the extra point. Three yard reception for Isaiah Robinson. And Weaver's extra point is good. So a big lift here for the Demon Deacons. They pick off a pass, they convert. Isaiah Robinson, true freshman, in for six. Welcome back, 29-14, Wake Forest cutting into the lead. And again, their defense setting up a touchdown here in Logan, Utah, with 13.06 remaining in the third quarter. Exactly what they needed to do, take advantage of opportunities. Got young players on this team. They got an interception, almost ran it back for a touchdown, but didn't. So a good opportunity for this young offense to work in the red zone and make it effective. And you just got a good look at Daryl Garrettson, who uh, has been pressed into service in this game with Chucky e. Keaton and not the starting uh, with the offense for Utah State here in the second half. So Adam Centers will kick off here for Wake Forest. Hunter Sharp deep for Utah State. And this one is going to go all the way to the back of the end zone and out. Let's go downstairs, Cassie. Guys, got an update on Chucky e. Keaton, head trainer for Wake Forest. Just told me he has a sore left knee. They're holding out on him for precautionary reasons. Right now, Keaton's in the locker room getting checked out. We'll let you know if we find out anything more. All right, thanks, Cassie. Precautionary uh, reasons and measures on the Utah State sideline. And so Daryl Garrettson uh, will continue to run this offense. And, you know, Garrettson was 6-1 and one last year. As a starter, Eric, when uh, Chucky e. Keaton was injured in that game against BYU, so no stranger to this Utah State offense. Yeah, not at all. And you'd expect him to come out here and execute, and uh, the experience that he has, and right now, it's not looking very good. Not at all. And a mix-up there in the backfield, and Utah State goes for a big loss. And in on the play that time was Mark Markel Lee. Just doesn't look like he's really into this game. Not handling the ball. A very good snap by the center, but not handling the ball correctly, and then that messes up the time of the whole entire play. If you look at the strength of this Wake Forest team, it's in the middle, and they're very high on their young, young linebacking core as well. As second and 14 now for Garrettson. He finds an open receiver in the flat ground of Butler, but not much of a game as he's knocked down by Merrill Noel. Noel. You know, and you wonder, a guy like Daryl Garrettson, do you, do you you maybe back up the offense, you know, tone it down a little bit to get Garrettson in a rhythm. 
Well, I don't know about toning it down. I mean, they've got their, their install for the week, and he should be able to run it. I mean, he had six solid games last year. He knows what they're trying to accomplish. I think he has to come in and execute this offense. Third and eight now for Garrison. Empty backfield as he unloads this one and does not hook up with Damon Patterson. Penalty on the play. Marquel Lee again, and let's see if they get roughing the passer. First and foul, roughing the passer. Number eight defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Now Markel Lee. Right here is the guy right here coming through. He's the linebacker. He's the one who, yeah, he took a shot right to his head. Yeah, the crown. Yep. And that has been a point of emphasis this year in college football. Looks like he tried to use his hands, but a little bit too late. Another first down by penalty for Utah State. And they hand the ball off that time to Rashawn Hall, dumping around the left side. And that contained beautifully by this Demon Deacon defense. by Ed Janvian in on the stop again. Yeah, a little bit of a momentum swing right here. You can tell that the quarterback coming in for the game had a little few miscues here. Wake Forest defense stepping up, making some big plays, not giving up any big plays, especially coming out with a, uh, almost a, uh, a touchdown there on the defensive side with the interception early. So trying to build off that, let's see if they can create a three and out. Second and long for the Aggies. Garrettson in the flat. Damon Patterson, and that's a gainer for about seven or eight, but it'll be shy of the first down. Jambian again there for Wake Forest. And it looks like they're going to possibly go for this one, or no, it's his third down, so yeah. Got manageable at 36. Yeah, yeah. Much easier calling the plays. Making reads. They spread out that Wake Forest defense. Doesn't look like they're they maybe bringing some pressure here from the left side of the field down in this formation. Garrettson now feels the rush, and he had to throw that one away. So credit the Demon Deacons. Boy, they're really pumped up after that pick and touchdown. That'll bring up fourth and six in the punting unit out here for Utah State. They're really starting to feel this wide out kind of subside in terms of the loud noises they were making when they went up big in the first half. And you sense a completely different ball game right now. Well, I think what you're looking for on the way to the side for the coaches is you know, can we get a drive going offensively? Down you know, they haven't been able to put a drive together pretty much this whole entire game, and that's exactly what they need to see. See if these freshman linemen, freshman quarterbacks, you're going to see about seven or eight freshmen touch the field on offense, and you've got to make some plays, good opportunities for them. Petrude back into punt for Utah State. Jared Crump is deep for Wake Forest. Not the greatest of kicks here. This one's going to get a Utah State bounce. And they will let it roll dead at about the 22-yard line. So Wake Forest with another opportunity. And they have cut into this Utah State lead. 29-14 here on the CBS Sports Network. College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Warner Brothers Pictures. This is where I leave you in theater September 19th by the all new LG G3 and by Icy Hot Smart Relief 10s Therapy. Beautiful evening here in Logan, Utah. 38 degrees this morning and we're cooling down to mid 50s here as we roll on in the second half tonight. Utah State out of the Mountain West. And Wake Forest out of the ACC and the Demon Deacons with the ball as they begin this possession here with 10-22 remaining in the third quarter. And they're the team with all the momentum after trailing 29-7 here at halftime. John Wolford bobbled it a little bit. Now he's got a man up the field, caught. E.J. Scott for a big gainer as he gets it out to the 45-yard line. Nice job of anticipation right there by John Wolford. Reading the linebackers. Looking at the slot receiver inside right here. Puts a nice little move on Devin Centers. And that's how he got, got himself open on the play. 23-yard gain, but a flag. And this one will go against Wake. 
Yeah, these are the things that can just kill an offensive drive. You know, you're picking up some momentum from your defense. You finally had a nice play offensively, and then you have a, a, an errant penalty that sets you back into a first and 15 type of situation. Just a, a you know, just kind of a downer. 78 yards and penalties today for the Demon Deacons. 20 so far recorded by the Aggies. First and 15. Wolfer over the middle. He's got him in. Ball loose. Fumble. Scramble for the loose ball. And Wake says they've got it back. Well, coming up there is Cam Serigny out of Auburn, Virginia. 17-yard gain. He made the catch, and then he was the one that recovered it. A very accurate pass by Wolford. And Serigny just has to protect that football. I think that was number 21, Brian Sweet, who came in and forced that fumble. And the Demon Deacons are driving. What a story here as they try to get their offense on track here in the second half already with a touchdown. Wolford again in the flat has a man. And Matt James with a grab. That'll go for about five as he's taken out of bounds by Jalen Davis. But one of the strengths to Utah State's defense is their defensive front. And when you throw it outside and get pass protect for your quarterback, you really start taking that defensive line out of the picture. Looks like they're getting a little bit frustrated. Wolford handed it off inside back. A breaker on that time is Isaiah Robinson. And he goes with the first down all the way down to the 29 and a half yard line. There is no question the momentum right now squarely with Wake Forest. Right there, they're speeding up their offense right here, too. And you see this play right here. It looks like he might have been able to get tackled. But good blocking. Everyone's staying with their blocks, not giving up. And then Robinson able to squeak through. Wolford over the top. He's got a man again and down to the nine yard line. They made some very nice adjustments at halftime, thinking that they can inside out some of the defend defenders. And you see a number 85, Cam Serigny, doing exactly that twice in a row on pretty much the same exact route. Second big play on this drive for the tight end. First and 10. Not a bad spot to expect to fade right in the end zone. Wolford looking around, throws it to the corner, nearly picked off, and incomplete, which will bring up a second and 10. You know, you got to be really careful down here. You have an opportunity to maybe put your team within one touchdown of this football game, which wasn't the feeling at the end of the first half. And so making a good decision right here by Wolford will go a long way in this game. Tonight's red zone. Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. Second and ten. Three wide. Wolford fakes the handoff. Quarter of the end zone. Touchdown. What a grab that time. E.J. Scott. And the Demon Deacons battling back here in the third quarter in Logan. Well, I think the credit due to the offensive line of Wake Forest. Allowing Wolford to stand in there, go through progressions, throw on balance, and make an accurate throw. Seven plays, 78 yards, and a 10 yard touchdown pass to EJ Scott. Mike Weaver out for the point after. E.J. Scott, what a grab well, in the back side years, of the end zone. <laughs> and now we get a, a stoppage here, but a great look here. Single coverage, and E.J. Scott got that foot in. It looked like he got two down. Yeah, I believe this play is under review. There's one, two. Not sure why. But he got both feet clearly in bounds. Well, E.J. Scott, 33 yards on a couple of receptions. And, and how about the play of Cam Serigny on that drive, too, Eric? Two big catches to keep those to keep that drive alive. Well, I think what it was is you're mixing up where you're going with the football. You're taking it to your tight end. You're going out to your receivers. 
Throwing some double move routes. Confirmed touchdown, and so we all knew that. They looked at it just to make sure, and Mike Weaver now out for the extra point. E.J. Scott, everybody chanting Utah State. E.J. Scott saying, yeah, bring it on. Music to his ears, I guess. There's definitely new life in Wake Forest team. You can see it on the sideline. Guys are moving around. Their helmets are on. They're not just holding them. They're pretty excited to play right now. Extra point is on the way. Don't look now, but it is an eight-point game. E.J. Scott, graduate school. Ellicott City, Maryland native, and this one's getting tight. Big time ball game tonight in Logan, Utah. Wake Forest trailed by 22 at half, and now it is an eight point deficit. And they just finished a huge drive, Eric Crouch. 23 yard gain, a 17 yard gain, 11 and 19 yards. So they've gone big play with their freshman quarterback, John Wolford, 78 yards. And on that drive, five for six for 67 yards and the touchdown strike to EJ Scott. I think it'll be interesting to see how the Wake Forest defense plays now. I mean, a little bit more momentum. They're definitely in this football game. That's a Chucky Keaton in street clothes, so to speak. Pads are off, and so looks like this is going to be Daryl Garrison's a ball game the rest of the way for the Aggies. Kickoff goes deep into the end zone, and so Utah State will bring out their offense. Downstairs for an update, Cassie. Guys, over here on the Utah State sideline, Daryl Garrettson has been getting lots of talks from all the coaches. First head coach Matt Wells pulled him aside and was in his ear for a bit. Then wide receivers coach did the same. He's also been on the phone talking to the guys upstairs. Seems calm. He's been warming up his arms. And as you said, Chucky Keaton over there in street clothes, he's been talking to the other players. Guys. All right, thanks, Cassie. Uh, Daryl Garrettson, as we mentioned, a sophomore out of Chandler, uh, Arizona, and he went 6-1 and one last year in the absence of that man, Chucky Keaton, who now dons the street clothes. So the Aggies need to get their offense going, and a pass on the flat that time to Hunter Sharp. He breaks a tackle. And now he brings it outside across the 35, and that'll be good for a first down. Nice quick play, getting the ball out fast, letting Garrison really get into the rhythm. Throws a nice football out there to Hunter Sharp and some nice blocks on the outside, especially there by Jefferson Court, number 33. Hunter Sharp, stealthy good here tonight, the junior wide receiver out of Palmdale, California. 11 catches, 96 yards. Ball on the 36 and a handoff here as they try to bring it wide. JoJo Natson trying to break the outside with a step out of bounds at the 47. Otherwise, he was gone. Well, JoJo play Natson, by Merrill Noel. right, has been a problem for this Wake Forest defense all day. His speed to the edge is just too much. Nice play call at the time. Very nice blocking by the offensive lineman. And then great blocking downfield by the receivers as well. And that's really what's given him the extra yards, his speed and the downfield blocking, putting it together. Now they've mixed it up. JoJo Natson with four rushes in the first half, also four receptions. Garrettson's going to go deep, single coverage. Catch of the ball, big catch that time. Ronald Butler as he brings it down to the 11-yard line of Wake Forest. Huge gainer for the senior out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Daryl Garrettson here, nice fake on the pump and then coming backside, really taking the safety out of play. And a tremendous catch right there by Ronald Butler. And they go hurry up. Garrettson hands it off, big hole there, up the middle. And knocked down that time. the stop made by Ryan Jondi. So a nice run after a 42-yard pass play. Young offensive lineman blocking very well in the pass game, as well in the running game and the misdirection. Coming out this second half was a little bit 
revitalized energy and sense of purpose. And Lawan Hunt, the true freshman who had that run, is the single running back in the backfield. Garrison now rolling out, looks to go the other way, and a wide open touchdown. Ryan Houston. And the Aggies answer right back. Well, we talked about the defense early in this one. Lately, it's been all about the aerial attack and the offense here for both teams. And a big answer for the Aggies. Wake Forest defense getting excited, maybe over pursuing. That's what happens. Extra point on the way, and it is good. Five plays, 75 yards, including the six-yard touchdown pass. And there is a flag on the play. As Wyatt Houston brought it in for six. Flag on the play, so hold everything. Extra point is good. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Number nine, Wake Forest. 15-yard kicker being forced on the kick. Timeout. So the extra point is good, and a roughing the kicker on Kevin Johnson in a 36-21 game. Wake Forest cut into the Utah State lead, but now the Aggies just moments ago going down the field, and it's back to a 15-point lead for Utah State here on CBS Sports Network late in the third quarter. And I love the call by offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven. You see right here at tight end is Wyatt Houston. And when you see this play, they're going to roll out, seeing the offensive, uh, the, uh, the defense being aggressive. And when they're aggressive, they over-pursue. And then you forget about a wide-open tight end coming across the field. Tremendous play call. Great execution right there by the offense. And the assistant coaches for Utah State upstairs. As Tyler Henderson is the deep man for Wake Forest. And don't forget the penalty tacked off, roughing the kicker, so Utah State will kick from the 50. Semi pooch kick here as it's a play to the goal line that time, but bringing it out is Tyler Henderson, and he'll bring it all the way back to the 28 yard line. Downstairs, Cassie. Well, guys, after Daryl Garrettson's first touchdown, he ran off the field, got lots of hugs and high fives from his teammates. Obviously, everyone liking what they've seen so far from their backup QB. Chucky Keaton even gave him a huge hug. The crowd started chanting his name by the bench, so not a bad way to start, guys. Not at all. And you know, you've got to wonder, thanks, Cassie. You've got to wonder, too, Eric, uh, Daryl Garrettson, that drive, he needed that drive after it was getting to be a semi nail biting time from an Aggie's point of view. Right. Well, you don't you don't know. I mean, you don't know the extent of Chucky Keaton's injury, you know, whether he, he's going to be back. I mean, you, you saw him get really hurt last year, but but this year you never just know. And so supporting your backup quarterback is huge. Wolford in the shotgun and Wake Forest are looking to answer. Wolford all sorts of time that offensive line holding up for the Demon Deacons. Now he's flushed and he'll get it out. Maybe a gain of one. So a nice job that time by the offensive line of the Demon Deacons to really give them plenty of time. There is numbers, 65 yards on six for seven in the second half. And uh, in a lot of ways, this has been a game all about the quarterbacks, especially here as we move on in the second half. I think it's the way they're spreading it around, getting the ball their tight end, and getting guys open with the sense of urgency and throwing on time. The offensive line has done a great job. Second and ten, so no gain on that rollout by Wolford. Takes the handoff over the top. He's got a receiver caught at the 39-yard line. Serengay again, and he's becoming a huge story here in the second half for the Wake Forest offense. Right, and you know, why go away from Serengay right now? Your number one guy. 16-yard pickup. Here's a keeper by Wolford. And he'll go for about four yards. 
before he is dragged down that time by Frankie Sotera. Now they are starting to expose uh, Erica, the Utah State middle of the field defensively a little bit here. Well, yeah, Utah State's played a little cover too, and when you got two deep safeties, you do have a weakness in the middle of the field, and if you bring any blitz whatsoever, you lose a linebacker, and then you, you have an opening right there. And they've definitely taken advantage of every opportunity they have over the middle. We saw the look on Matt Wells, the head coach of Utah State, certainly nervous at this point as a pass in the flat is caught. And that'll go for a first down. Nice grab there. As Sotera knocks the ball player out of bounds. And again, this time, Cam Serenia. Well, they just can't cover him. They're, they're, he's running great routes. He's coming out with speed. They're finding mismatches right there against number 46. And that is a definite mismatch. They go right back to Serenier, and he brings it inside the 45-yard line and down to the 43. Piliaga that time with the tap. Typically, your safeties aren't used to covering guys one-on-one, -on -one, and when you bring them down, whether it's on a receiver or a tight end, you're creating mismatches, and I think they've done a great job of adjusting. Wake Forest is rolling right now to play up the middle. That but to Isaiah Robinson doesn't go for very much as Filiaga there again for the Aggies. And Isaiah Robinson, we were told last night in the meetings with the coaches of Wake Forest that we would probably see more of the freshman running back from Charlotte, North Carolina. Over the top of Serenier. As he is dumped on the play that time by Devin Centers and slow to get up. Well, he came down awkwardly, and you hope that he didn't land on his uh, on his head. Devin Centers has had a big game, and it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth and three. Agree or disagree? I agree. I think the offensive line is doing a great job, and it's just time for them to execute. Know where the sticks are. One for one a week ago against Gardner Webb, but certainly a step up in the competition here in Logan against the Aggies. Let's see what they can do. Wolford looks over the middle. He's got a receiver for a first down, and it's E.J. Scott who caught the touchdown pass earlier in the quarter. Just again, a, a nice one-on-one -on -one matchup. You have the slot receiver right here. Guess we'll see it late right there, but he got his guy beat and a nice throw by Wolford. And the Demon Deacons are rolling again here. Wolford takes the handoff to Robinson, going left side. He's got a receiver open and down to the 12-yard line. Jared Crump. And they're back in the Verizon red zone. You have to love the effort right now of number 88, Jared Crump, going up as high as he possibly can, knowing he's going to take a shot right there, just trusting that you're going to be able to catch that football. That's a tough thing to do. 23-yard pass completion, Robinson off tackle. He's going to get it inside the 10-yard line. Boy, Wake Forest's offense here in the second half really coming to life. What are they doing differently? Matt, now that they're actually play action off that run that we saw in the first half where they kept going to it, they just kept going and giving that little around the end, try to find a crease run, but now they're actually play action off it. I think that's where their success is coming from. Wolford with Robinson in the backfield. And the Demon Deacons are knocking again at the Aggie goal line from the eight. Wolford scrambling. Trying to get out of bounds, and he just throws this one away. Good poise there by the freshman quarterback. Zach Vigil hustling after him out of bounds. Again, great blocking up front by the offensive line, creating a pocket, giving the quarterback time. Wolford didn't like what he saw. Flushed the pocket, tried to extend the play, make something happen, but very good coverage in the secondary by Utah State. Third and seven for Wake Forest, three wide. Wolford looking to the sidelines, maybe a change here. Communication going on, Wolford play clock down to three. And he gets it off with a second to go as Wolford looks up, and he's 
taken to the lead. A ground that time by B.J. Larson. So another fourth down situation. Looks like they can go for the field goal here. B.J. Larson just beating Corey Helms with a nice swim move right there, getting to the quarterback. We'll see Larson coming from this side right here. Very aggressive first quick step to beat his guy. 30-yard attempt for Mike Weaver. And it's good. So Weaver cuts the lead to 12. A couple of missed extra points, two looming possibly as we have an injured player down at the 15-yard line. Could be number 59, Antonio Ford. Well, the extra point was good, and it's a 12-point Aggies lead. As both offenses here in the second half getting on track, but again, an injured Demon Deacon at the 15-yard line. Well, that's a successful drive right there, being able to put points up on the board. Get something, make something out of it. Good decisions by the quarterback to not turn the ball over down here in the red zone. Well, and a great sustained drive too, Eric. 13 plays that went for 66 yards, and they took a little more than four and a half minutes off the clock as the injured player is being attended to. Well, don't forget, not everyone could be a quarterback, so get inside the minds of those who can. Join Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, Trent Green, and special guest Boomer Esiason for NFL Monday QB, delivered by FedEx Monday at 5 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, I'm not a quarterback. You were a very good one, Eric Crouch. What do you think of the offense here in the second half? This is turning into a... A barn burner here tonight in Logan. It sure is. I mean, you love seeing some offense now. You've got a, a young team in Wake Forest and you know, a lot of youth all around. People uh, being replaced from last year on both sides of the football. But Wolford, uh, you know, impressive drive, two drives, making good decisions, getting some blocks from his linemen, commanding the huddle. You know, Coach Dave Clawson's got to be very excited with what just happened here in the second half. Something to build off of exactly what they need to move this program forward. Dave Clawson is going to win at Wake Forest. It's just a matter of time. They're going to run it out. For the 20. They'll take it down that time. Kennedy Williams that time bringing it back. 36-24, Wake Forest trailing. Well, let's take a look at the a premier installment of Eye on the Future. We'll take a closer look at Wake quarterback Kevin Johnson. We've talked all night about how the corners, very talented group. The future looking good, especially on the defensive side of the ball for the Demon Deacons. Up the middle goes for maybe a yard. Zach Ray on the uh, takedown. And, and Kevin Johnson, this isn't a coach talking, Eric. Uh, this is from an NFL scout. Right, and he has all the tools. You look there, long and lean. You saw that highlight of him being able to jump up and tip a ball and make a big play. And, and his interceptions, his ability to move fast, change directions, switch his hips. Those types of things when you see out of a defensive back are very, very important. Again, 175 pounds, he's got to get bigger, got to get stronger. Second and eight for Garrison in the offense. Complete that time to Wyatt Houston. Wyatt brings it out about a yard and a half shy of a first down. And so it'll be third and short as we get set for quarter number four here in the Wasatch. End of the third quarter, it's 36-24. Aggies of Utah State in the lead.